the practice that is, as it exists now uh, probably came into to being in the 1980s in, in the military as a result of uh, officers after the Vietnam War getting together and wanting to reinstitute a lot of these organizational learning practices. And when I say reinstitute, uh, this stuff used to be done thousand years ago uh, around the campfire at night. You know, armies would, would rarely fight at night. Most of them would fight during the day. And at night, the campfires would be lit and all the soldiers would sit around the campfire and basically talk about what happened that day, talk about what went right, talk about what went wrong, uh, help each other uh, diffuse the stress of seeing you know, comrades that were killed or these kinds of traumatic things that happened, and most importantly, what to do different next time, which was usually when the sun rose. You know, they had an immediate opportunity to apply that learning to the very next day of the battle. Well, I think the last time that we as Americans really saw this practice is in the Civil War. You know, we have a lot of media and movies and stories and poetry and, and whatnot that talks about that, what happens around the campfire at camp at night with the soldiers. Um, then I think we go to World War I, which dramatically changed how wars were fought. Um, it, it was fought on a more round-the-clock basis, or there was a lot of stagnation, but it wasn't very well used. You know, commanders were now miles into the rear, and technology had enabled all these new things to go on, and we lost that practice. And where the roots of the modern AAR really came back was in World War II in the Pacific. In 1943, one of the foremost military historians, SLA Marshall, uh, was tasked by the Center for Military History to go uh, and interview soldiers en masse from the 7th Infantry Division after their campaigns in Kwajalein and the Marshall Islands and the Pacific in 1943. And he had to develop these techniques of how to interview groups, platoons, companies of soldiers uh, as a large group. And those techniques are really what came into the modern practice of the after action review. So after Vietnam, uh, a lot of officers and NCOs felt frustrated that we weren't a learning organization in the Army or the other armed services. And that generation really rededicated to them, themselves to bringing back the practice of organizational learning, which is how the After Action Review came into being. But essentially, the practice really gained traction in our combat training centers. Uh, that's where whole units, uh, 400, 600,000 people would go train for a month or so in a completely virtual combat environment, it's very realistic. You know, you really feel like you're there in, w in this fictional country fighting this enemy who are some of the best soldiers that uh, the Army has to offer. And the need to continuously improve, because if you didn't improve, you were going to have your head handed to you by the bad guys the very next day. So there's a lot of motivation to improve. And that is really where the practice gained shape because people could see the immediate results. They could talk about something, they could do it in a professional way, they could go out the very next day and implement it and watch their performance improve. And you can't argue with results. And so over, over time, throughout the 90s or late 80s, early 90s, the Gulf War, that practice really became accepted. Okay. Oh, absolutely, there's a lot of parallel application right now in other environments. Uh, talking about the combat training center and how we were able to use it to immediately see performance. Now in online gaming you're seeing exactly the same thing. All these groups of, of people spread all over the country are trying to work as a unit in these online games and advance to the next level. They're getting their butts kicked by the game. You know, they want to improve and they're, they're literally doing virtual online AARs in order to improve. But uh, BMW Cycle regularly institutes after action reviews. So you're seeing it all throughout industry, the medical profession, non-governmental organizations in Africa are patterning themselves uh, off of that learning organization template. Uh, Harvard Business School, you know, Dr. David Garvin has written a lot of excellent material on learning in action. So it's really going uh, to many environments and many industries and applications. Uh -huh. 
uh, the, the return on investment of an after action review is almost immediate. So as your crew conducts an after action review on day two of a 14 day assignment, you get to go right out the next day and apply that learning. You, know, you can decompose what happened on today's assignment, who was where, how did that fit against our plan, what caused those things to occur, good, bad, indifferent, uh, how do we do it again tomorrow, and go immediately out and put those things into practice. So you get people who are innovating at the Firefighter 2 level. They are bringing innovation to the ground on that assignment, on that division, on that branch, on that incident, and hopefully that's occurring on every, uh, every assignment going on on that incident. Uh, people are going to feel bought in to what your crew's doing, what the team's doing, because they're part of the solution. They're no longer part of the problem. They're there helping to fix it. Uh, and if you can, if you can get 1% better every day in your assignment, wherever it is, whether it's ground unit support leader or your, you know, trail Pulaski on a hotshot crew, that's got to lead to organizational success.